Okay, well, let's get started with talking about strumming. And the basic thing that you'd have to start with on strumming is how do you hold your pick? Okay, so I, well, I should mention that I like to use a thin pick. You can see how flexible this is. And um, hold it between the thumb and your index finger. And I tend to not like to squeeze very hard, but kind of think of an infant in a crib is the best way I can describe it. A small little baby, if you give your finger to that baby, they'll grip onto it, and sometimes you can almost lift them out of a crib. They're not using muscles because they're not developed yet, but they are sticking to that finger and using uh, a relaxed hold on it, and that's what we would like to do with the pick. The other thing is to curl the other fingers that aren't holding it uh, underneath and the middle finger starts to serve as a, a little guide so that the pick doesn't want to spin around as you're trying to strum. So if the pick is right against your finger it's going to stay put. Okay so now that we see how to hold the pick we should talk about where to strum from. And I like to try this little experiment and maybe you could try it along with me is hold your hand out with your palm down and just simply turn your palm to face up. Now most people are going to use local muscle using their wrist muscles just to turn that palm up. But another way we could do that is to relax that wrist and rotate the elbow and that will give you the same effect. Your palm will turn up. One could go back even farther, relax the wrist, relax the elbow, and roll your shoulder forward and get the same effect. And with, we could go all the way down the body, but in music I tend to at best go down into my diaphragm if I'm playing at a square dance where you're playing long and hard. This is all going to affect how we strum. You could turn that wrist up by turning your upper body. So the idea being, when we're holding our pick, if we're strumming, rather than to strum by the wrist, which will wear out after a while, you could strum from bigger muscle groups, mostly from the elbow. At dances, you could get that shoulder involved in doing it. And if you're really playing a long, hard dance, just go into this direct drive. So this is, again, this is just a, a way of looking at it. So, when you're strumming, to strum at least from your elbow is a good thing. Now, the other thing, the next question would be, where, where would we strum? So, the best way is to find what you like the best. So, here we got, if we strum up here in the strum hall, you get one sound. And if we strum, you know, farther down the, ne the neck, it's a little different. So, I'm going to hit the strings with the same amount of pressure and just listen to what difference it makes and then on your instrument you try this and you'll find your sweet spot. This is where I like it, right in here. Although that can change, I mean sometimes if you're playing down low, you can follow your hand down and follow it back up. You just play with it. The secret is to play. Okay, the next thing we should talk about with strumming is the angle of the strum. Now, I tend to like a, my dulcimer to have three strings with a single melody string. Now, a lot of people have the double melody string and, and play fine with it and like it. I find it gets in my way. I find it's harder to do hammer-ons and pull-offs. I find that on the higher end models, the strings stay pretty parallel. But on a lot of instruments, when you are running up and down the fingerboard, the strings, the double melody string will separate or go together and gives you a little bit of a dissonant sound in an already somewhat muddy sounding <laughs> configuration. So I tend to like the uh, single melody string. Uh, my feeling is that the double melody string was developed to increase the volume of the melody over the drones. Um, but 
you don't need that if you strum it in a certain manner. So for example, if I'm strumming in, I'm exaggerating now, if I'm strumming in, I'm strumming at a downward angle so that you hit your melody string louder. When you strum out, you strum at an upward angle and hit your melody string a little louder than your drones. What this gives you is when you're strumming, you can control the volume of your melody coming out of the instrument. If you're the one that knows the tune and there are other instruments that you're playing with, you know, sometimes fiddles or banjos or even other dulcimers, you need to project your melody clearly. And so you would hit the melody string louder. Um, on the other hand, if you're playing a tune that you don't know, you can still play it, but hit the melody string softer and nobody will know that you don't know it. So it's just up to you. But here, the idea is this, uh, I'll just play a tune and play the melody a little louder and then play it not so loud. Idea. I mean, I went started with a bright, high melody or loud melody and went and softened it up just ever so slightly. So you get the idea. Okay, so once we have figured out about where to strum and how to hold the pick and all that, the next thing would be what do you strum? Now, again, uh, a lot of times people learn this, this bum diddy strum where it's You know is a good basic um, way to strum when it comes to a lot of the old fiddle tunes and such but the limitation of that is that you have to understand that that might be the underlying rhythm but you have to play around that um, really what's important is playing the melody of the tune so I'll give you a little example I'll play a little bit of soldiers joy again only this time um, first I'll play it with a bum diddy strum and then I'll play it with what I call freestyle strumming. Okay, so here, here we go. Here's trying it with the bum diddy strum, so. freestyle strum it would the melody to me rings out a little bit clearer so this is how my approach would be to it anyway so instead of playing that set pattern starting the basic strum of what you're doing is playing the melody so the melody would sound a little different style strumming it makes it easier to change also in the tune you could play the melody any number of ways that tune some people would play that a part more like uh, or a fiddle might even put in um, just 
makes it a little easier to be more free with your melody, to do the freestyle strumming. Okay, so there are a lot of aspects to the strumming. I mean, it's really simple, but it's some, what do they say? It's simple, but it's sometimes not easy. It takes doing, it takes, you know, relaxing and just enjoying it. That's the bottom line. But one other aspect that I wanted to cover now is the idea of damping the strings. And this is something that really adds that rhythmic shuffle kind of a feel to a tune. And, um, well, we'll just, let's just look at that right now. So the idea of damping, there's a couple of techniques that I use. And again, it just helps with that, you know, kind of fiddle shuffle feel that you get um, from, it's basically like the rhythm of clog dancing a tune or, you know, buck dancing or whatever, just tapping out the tune with your feet. It's you're doing it with your strum. So the techniques I tend to use is, first is just to brush the strings with these fingers. So you get this idea. So just without it, it's like this. Now to brush the fingers. And then the other aspect is to actually drop your hand onto the strings and damp. I'm exaggerating. Well, here, I'll just play a little bit of a tune. I'll do it first without any of that, and then start adding it in, and you can get the feel for it. So I'll use this tune, Uncle Henry, and I'll play it through one time just strumming, and then I'll play it through another time and add some of these damping techniques. And some with the finger scraping, some with the drop in the palm, and see if you can f see that and figure out what's going on and what's making these sounds. So, so here's Uncle Henry. Let's take a closer look at that, maybe a little bit slower. So the main thing about strumming is put time into doing it and getting those techniques of damping and playing the melody with your strum. These are all things that come easier in time. You get one tune down, then you go to the next tune. After a while, it becomes second nature, kind of like riding a bicycle. Uh, we will cover a few more strumming techniques as they are totally intertwined with the noting techniques. So we'll move on to noting right now.